Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another test driven development video. When we left off, we had just finished getting our dollars uh, working with a double rather than an int. And the nice thing about this is, is that we don't have to change any of the rest of our code because we fixed our primitive obsession really early on. Um, now that we've changed dollar, dollars to use a double, I think we may have actually solved our problem. Um, we're still doing a snip here but we don't have to. And I think as soon as we get rid of that, we fixed it. And in case you're just tuning in, uh, what happens? What happened is we have a cumulative rounding error. And uh, so after 40 years, we've got like $150 difference between what we, the amount we say we have and the amount we actually should have. But um, I think we can fix that just like that. No. <laughs> no. Okay, let's see what went wrong. Um, darn. Ah, that would have been great if it had just worked. Okay, well here, so that's... That's actually not interesting anymore. Let's take that out. Okay, here, yes. Just little things. So in our interest earned, we are saying that we've got, uh, starting with 10,000, uh, subtracting 4,000, paying capital gains on some of that. Let's see, is this the only... Yeah, interesting. Um, so we're subtracting 4,000, paying capital gains on some of that. So uh, it's 333. So we're actually subtracting 10,000 minus 10,000 minus 4,333 gives us, uh, yeah, and then multiply that times a 10% interest, 567 is our actual value. So it's not surprising that failed. That was actually, we were correctly testing that it, the behavior, but the behavior was wrong. And now we fixed it. Okay, look at that. Okay, that's beautiful. So this is really illustrating the purpose of these value objects here, because I didn't have to go in and change stock market year at all. I had to fix one of the tests, but I didn't have to change stock market year I didn't have to change interest rate or tax rate other than to make it use dollars properly. Uh, there was a little bit of issue there that I hadn't figured out the first time. I didn't have to change stock market. Everything just worked because I changed this from a double, uh, from an int to a double. And if I change it back, everything would break again. And now in the future, if I want to change this to, say, a fixed point uh, amount, again, change dollars, nothing else has to change. That's the idea of once and only once, which is to say, um, ex this is Kent Beck saying, of course, express every concept in your system once and only once. So every, every concept needs to have a place for it, and it needs to be in just one spot. Uh, before we had eliminated the primitive obsession, we didn't really express the concept of dollars. We just had these integers everywhere. Um, now we're expressing it. Now we can change it, and we only change one thing. And I apologize for just going on, but this is why we spend all that time making value objects. So that eliminates at least part of our cumulative rounding error. Now let's go ahead and bring back our spreadsheet. And assume, assume that we are now withdrawing amounts. So let's say we're withdrawing a thousand a year. Um, Uh, let's make it, I don't want to end up with a negative number, so let's make it 500 a year. 
Now eventually we should withdraw our principal. In theory, it looks like the spreadsheet isn't working properly. Um, oh, you know what? I took out, I think I took out all this, when I made this simpler version of the spreadsheet, I think I took out the stuff that would make that work properly. Um, so let me pause the video, fix up the spreadsheet, because what I want to do next is I want to do a desk check. We've got the interest rate working. Um, now I want to do a desk check of our capital gains tax. And, um, the way that that affects the ending value. So I'm going to pause the video and uh, bring over the more complete version of the spreadsheet that I have and get back to you. Okay, I'm back. So I looked at my spreadsheet and as I did that, it took me down a, a huge rabbit hole. Here's, here's the updated version of my spreadsheet. Um, what I realized is that in my spreadsheet, I actually um, assume that the first amount I withdraw is the capital gains. Now, this is all a big, well, I'm not going to say what I want to say. It's, it's complicated. Um, the fact is, is that it's all an abstraction. Uh, you don't, so the way, now, I, the way the stock market works and the way taxes on that works and remember, I am not a financial expert uh, at all. This is not financial advice. But my understanding is that in the U.S., what you are supposed, supposed to do is track every stock purchase you make, and then when you sell that stock, that specific stock, you calculate capital gains on that. Now, in my spreadsheet, I was taking a somewhat pessimistic route and was saying that Everything is purely capital gains. And in the program, I actually did the opposite, I think, and was assuming that the first thing you, that nothing's capital gains until you completely sell off all of your principal. But neither of those abstractions are actually correct. Um, what, let me just pull this up and see how that's working. Capital gains tax. Um, Yeah, so I think if I was withdrawing or selling a thousand dollars, I was assuming there was no capital gains tax on that. That's not at all correct. So, um, so as I was starting to do my desk check or get ready to do the desk check, I realized that. Uh, I can't compare the way it worked in the spreadsheet to the way it's working in the program now, but furthermore, the way it's working in the program now is definitely not correct, but the way it's working in the spreadsheet is not really correct either. Um, the spreadsheet is a better abstraction, at least it's more pessimistic, it doesn't give us this false sense of security, but what would really be, I mean the real thing is to track every purchase and every sale and calculate the capital gains on each one. Um, I don't want to do that because we're not actually tracking individual purchases and sales, but uh, it's a whole can of worms. So I'm not exactly sure what I want to do about this yet. Um, I think I'm going to have to go off and think about it. But I do know for a fact that we have an issue with the way capital gains is working now. Uh, we, as we assume that first withdrawal is from principal, but in fact every sale has some capital gains associated and also tax as well. So, um, I don't know. I think we're going to have to come back to this. Uh, for now, let's just, we did check our cumulative error due to 
in our interest. So let's just go ahead and say that that's done. We're going to have to come back and do a desk check on our capital gains tax. Um, and we'll just do that in the future because we, there's no point in checking what we have now against the spreadsheet because the spreadsheet uses a different model. Um, we got rid of dollars.2int. Just going to do some cleanup and then I think that'll be it for this video. I'm going to go away and think about this some more and come back. But let's just finish cleaning up. We did our 2 int. We converted dollars to half pennies. Um, I'm not sure what to do next. It would be nice to get into some of this Polish UI, but I hate to leave things so badly up in the air with stock market gear. Um, I think what we need to do is really take a good, solid, hard look at what the domain terms are here and um, fix a lot of this. So, a little unfortunate. Good to have found it now, though. So, I uh, appreciate you watching, and I think that's it for today, so I will catch you next time.